Watch as we sponge paint, spatter paint, and chalk paint these old steps. This beautiful texture renewed our miserable looking steps. And I mean, look at how bad they once were. And you could do the same for your steps. Say goodbye to sad looking concrete using our repair and painting techniques with love for a country house. Our steps are looking really good now, but check out how badly they were crumbling. We also had terrible cracks opening in three of the lower steps, but we're going to knock loose the pieces gently and sweep the steps as we go along. We did a lot of research on how to repair these and we're going to use Quickcrete. This concrete patcher has vinyl built in. We bought this bucket sized Quickcrete from Home Depot because this is easy to handle. See how we're using a plastic kitchen scoop to start small batches of the patcher? You can count your scoops just like making a recipe and then you can blend it with small amounts of water to make a peanut butter consistency for vertical surfaces and make a milkshake consistency for working on horizontal patches. We don't use fancy trowels at all. We just used an ordinary putty knife, a plastic putty knife, to spread the peanut butter concrete. And we used a paintbrush, which we'll show you later, to do some of the cracks. Here we used a kitchen knife. It's square tips, just like a joint trowel, but we like ours better, of course, because we got it out of the kitchen drawer. Probably the best tool we use is this two inch paintbrush. We can use it to get our areas wet. We can use it as a trowel to scoop up some of the concrete with it and apply it where you need it. And you use the same paintbrush for feathering and smoothing out your repair work. The paintbrush will leave a little bit of texture on the surface, sort of like what professionals call a broomed finish, where they use a broom to texture the fast drying concrete? Well, when our main patches are partially set for a few minutes, we use the damp brush dipped in water to smooth and feather that concrete right over and blend it into the old concrete. And it'll have that slight room texture. After curing for about a week, we can seal the concrete with our chalk paint. Chalk paint bonds super well and it covers in one coat, but the flat colors can still show a lot of dirt and stains. And our whole purpose for doing this texture was to minimize the amount of maintenance and sweeping and cleaning. So we start with a base coat of dark brown. We use Truffle by Waverly on the steps and we're using an off-white on the risers. We're gonna let this dry for about a day and then we're gonna use ordinary sponges. We use synthetic, you can use real sponges too. But we use synthetic because we really tore up these sponges. We used a second shade of brown called hazelnut, which is a little bit more golden and a lot lighter than the truffle. We sponged it into the flat brown, and then we put a third coat of the truffle again on top of the hazelnut to blend it back. We want to try to get the effect of natural stone or marble here. Now you could use all kinds of colors to do your sponge painting, but we wanted to go for a real neutral, easy to care for surface. And should these stain or wear off over a long period of time, we'll be able to match these colors pretty easily and repair it without much sign of repair at all. You can see we're going over with the two colors a, a couple of times until it looks natural. And then to accent the blurriness of the two browns, we dipped this brush into hazelnut paint and we spattered it. Sometimes we dip the brush into water too, as it can take a little effort to make sure it spatters well. It only spatters for about a minute or so, and then you've got to dip it in again. The spatters are sharply outlined and they do a nice contrast against the blurriness of the two browns. We let it dry a little bit and then we blend in a little bit of the spatter so it's not too overwhelming. But try to leave as much spattering as you can. 
We went back over our risers again and made them lighter and lighter. We really started to see how plain white was really going to work for giving these steps the kind of lift we were looking for. But we found it a little difficult to do nice sharp edges, especially on these old steps. So we went for masking tape, good old masking tape. We placed the masking tape along the edges where we wanted a sharply defined white edge and we went over it with the white paint. This was the fun part, of course, peeling it off and seeing that nice straight edge. And wherever there was a little bit of an area where we hadn't quite covered with the chocolate brown, we just touched it up a little bit with a small artist brush. And that was pretty much it. Our steps were really looking good. Now you could put a sealer on this, and we probably will if we find it wears a lot, but these steps don't get an awful lot of traffic or anything like that. But if you're a stew, just use a water-based sealer. There's lots of good ones out there, and it may deepen your color a little bit, so you might want to allow for that. And that's it. Here are our freshly painted steps, and they're holding up really well. So, it's two shades of brown chalk paint blended together with a sponge to create a texture that hides dirt and a little bit of non-slip effect. And off-white on the risers to give a lift and make these steps look taller. The white also helps you see the edge of the steps as the sun goes down and that makes it safer too. We hope you like this project and click the like button if you do. And if you want to see more pictures of this project, just visit our website, steffymccarthy.com. Click on the Sun logo to subscribe. See you later.